start with just telling you that my, my tribal heritage is Koyunkawi. It's um, in anglicized to Konkau. Our tribe, our homeland is the northern Sierra Nevada in California. And that is where my mother was born. Um, I was not born in the Sierra Nevada. I was born in San Diego, California, and um, was there for the first nine years of my life. So the stories I want to tell are just little vignettes. Um, and they have to do, I guess you could say thematically, with just the issues of dealing with Indian stereotypes and racism. And I think um, for many of us who are Indian, we start learning that early on in our lives. Um, so San Diego was a lovely place to spend the first nine years of my life. I lived out on Point Loma. My uh, family bought a house right after the war, and so there were a lot of Navy families in that area. Um, and I remember very well the, um, the yellow ochre color of the cliffs right by the ocean, and the smell of eucalyptus and the smell of sage, um, sagebrush that was around in the open area, still around in our neighborhood. Um, we lived right across the alley from my elementary school, which was called Silvergate. And um, I remember in first grade, my teacher was Mrs. Barnes. And we had show and tell for the first time. We never had that in kindergarten, so show and tell. And my mom said, why don't you take my Indian costume and show and tell the Indian costume? Well, my mother had been a stage singer, a nightclub singer in San Francisco, and had her, her shtick was to sort of wear this, this doe-skin dress that she had made herself. Um, and she'd sort of made up the pattern, and then she'd beaded all these beads, and, and um, this was nothing like our traditional clothing in California, which would have been sort of a grass skirt and beads with no top, and maybe a, you know, a basketry hat that would not have cut it on the stage in San Francisco. Probably, well, maybe some stages, but not that one. So, um, so I brought this, this beautiful dress that she had created and shared it with my first grade class. And after I'd finished sharing, my, my teacher said, and does your mother live in a teepee? <laughs> I didn't really know what to say. Um, no, mom lives with us in our house. We don't even have a teepee. Um, so that was sort of the first funny moment of sort of finding out that I was a little bit different and, and that there was um, some other way of thinking about Indians. Um, in, in third grade, I had a teacher named Mrs. Frazier. And um, she, I think she was from the South. She was, it, in, during springtime, I don't know if any of you remember this, but in the 50s, we all used to learn how to folk dance. And it was our multicultural, you know, event for the, for the, for the time, for the 1950s. And um, so Mrs. Frazier decided that all the little white girls and boys would dance together and all the dark-skinned kids would dance together. And so she segregated us. And I went with the Portuguese and the Italians and the Hispanics. And, and, and I, I, I kept thinking, you know, there's something kind of funny about this. And went home and, and told my parents and... Um, they were a little upset by that. But again, it was that sort of a low level, maybe, of um, a kind of racism that went on. Around that same time, my mother enrolled us in ballet, tap, and gymnastics. I hated ballet and tap, but I loved gymnastics. I liked tumbling, and I still do stuff like that. And, um, you know, standing on my head and all that kind of stuff. And I was standing in line one day. Um, we were waiting to get on the mat and tumble or do whatever we were going to do. And the little girl in front of me turns around and looks at me with just the most vicious, angry face and says, Dirty Jap. <laughs> I know. I mean, you're, you're laughing because my first thought was, She's got it wrong. I'm an Indian. She should have said dirty Indian. But, but I knew that that was, you know, I knew there was, there was something wrong with that, that whole, um, I knew this was a very mean and uh, nasty thing to say. Little girl turns around and just goes off. 
And um, after class, I asked my mother about it, and I told her what this incident had been, and she said, well, you know, the war's been over for a few years, but some people lost their daddies in the war, and there's a lot of anger about that. So maybe she just was angry at you for some reason. She mis mistook you and, was, and took her anger out on you. It, it helped a little bit with that hurt, but it, but it stayed with me for a very long time. There have been all kinds of those funny little incidents. In fourth grade, a boy sat on my desk and, and said, you must be an Indian. I had braids at that time. He said, because you've got a line right here, you must be cracked. You're an Indian. And, and later, <laughs> I'm already an adult. This woman comes up to me and says, so how long have you been identified as an Indian? <laughs> she was being politically correct. She was like, you know, she was the PC police on this stuff. And I'm like, I, all my life? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it, those, are, those are those kind of funny things. Just the other day, just a couple of days ago, our little granddaughter came home. And we were, she was sitting in the kitchen, and I'm, like, starting to cook dinner. And um, she says, um, Janice, what do Indians wear? <laughs> and I'm like, she says, they wear buckskin, don't they? And I was thinking about what I just told you about our traditional clothing in California. We didn't wear a whole lot of clothing traditionally because it's hot in California. But I didn't want to tell her that. <laughs> so I said, well, yeah, in the old days, traditionally, some people did wear buckskin. It kind of depends where you lived um, and how cold it was and that sort of thing. And then I was thinking, of course, about my mother's doeskin dress. And um, that's, that's really, that's my stories. Those are my little incidences. So thank you so much. For... Thank you.